Today we're going to set up two Raspberry Pis using Falcon Pi Player so they play videos for our holiday projections in sync, totally, frame by frame. So let's get started. Now if you haven't watched my video before where we're, we were configuring the Falcon Pi Player using that FPP wireless network that it automatically creates whenever you don't hook it to an Ethernet uh, network. Uh, go back and watch that. The link will be down in the description. Uh, but we're starting basically at that point. In fact, we're starting a little bit before that point because uh, although I have expanded the file system, which is one of the steps, uh, that is it. Uh, there has been zero configuration uh, on this Falcon Pi player. So this is basically just uh, put in there, expanded the file system, rebooted, and here we sit. So now let's talk about how we're going to connect our Falcon uh, Pi players together. Uh, there's a couple of different ways. One way is you can have a hard hardwired network, which means you take an Ethernet cable, you plug it into the Pi, you plug it into a switch or a router, uh, you take the other one, you plug it into an Ethernet cable into the same switch or router, uh, or at least a connected one, and they can talk. Uh, the other way of doing it is through Wi-Fi, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we want to do is we come over here to status and control. We're going to come down to network. And there's a couple of things that we want to set here. Uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to name this first Pi uh, the master, basically. So I'll know which one is which. Uh, and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, change that first. It's real easy. Uh, we come over here to network configuration. And then we're going to go over here to host and DNS settings. Uh, and here is the name. Right now it's just FPP. Uh, but if you build a, a brand new one again, uh, you know, just by flashing the image like I showed you in the other video, uh, they're all going to be called FPP. Well, that, you know, is not good, right? We need to have some distinction here. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, put in FPP dash. I'm going to call this guy the master. All right. I'm going to click update DNS. And it's going to ask me to reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now we've got our uh, Falcon Pi player rebooted, and so let's go back under network one more time under status and control. And now we're going to change how this uh, Falcon Pi player connects, how, does, how it basically talks to the network. Uh, and I want to set a fixed IP, and I just want to do that for convenience. That way I can put a little label on them and hey, I know this is 192.168.0.100 or whatever in case I need to talk to this Pi. So it's mostly for my convenience, uh, but there's a couple of ways you can do that. First of all, again, we could plug in the Ethernet cables to the Ethernet port, and by the way, ETH0 refers to the Ethernet port on the Pi, uh, or uh, you can uh, connect to a wireless network, uh, and that is the WLAN 0 here, and that's the one I'm going to configure today. I've already set up a special wireless network that's literally called Show Network, uh, and that's going to be uh, the one I'm going to use for the show. So I'm going to select WLAN0 here, uh, and I want to set a static IP. And I'm going to come down here, and I happen to know this, the IP addresses that I need to use, uh, because again, I've configured this network, and I know it uses 192.168, uh, and that the uh, main router is on 10 here, so I'll put that on 10. And I'm going to put this guy on 100 just to uh, make it different. Uh, so all of my devices are going to be 100 and then on up. So the next one we're going to configure will be 101. And then I'm going to come down here, uh, and then we're going to pick uh, my show network. And then I have to enter in the key for the network, which is the password, basically. There we go. And I'm going to click Update Interface. And it says, uh, oh, it says, don't forget to set a uh, DNS IP. And it gives you a couple of suggestions there uh, if you're not sure. Uh, if you want to, you certainly can. I'm going to come over here and uh, put in a... Uh, DNS entry. Uh, this network, by the way, is not even on the internet, so this is really just to make them stop complaining about it. Uh, and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, come back over here and uh, hit update interface. And uh, let's do a restart of the network. 
And so it, said, it warns you that you're about to lose your connection. And that's totally true. If you look up here, I'm at 192.168.8.1. And that's under that uh, FPP wireless network that it creates. That is, def that is its default IP address it uses for that. However, I'm telling my Pi to connect to my show network. And as soon as I do, it will no longer create the FPP network for me. So you want to be really careful and make sure that you got all this information correct. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to connect to the network. And then you really only have two options. You can plug in an Ethernet cable and then like search for it and find it that way. Uh, or uh, you can uh, just uh, reflash the image of Falcon Pi Player and onto your SD card and just basically start from zero again. Just a quick correction, I realized that I clicked yes here and what I should have clicked is cancel and apply it next reboot. So please do that instead. Don't be a big dummy like me. And now we're gonna come down here and we are going to uh, reboot our Pi. Now our Master Falcon Pi player has rebooted. So let's just go ahead and kind of review everything again. Uh, under status control, we're gonna go to network. And if I select the WLAN, uh, here's the information I put in. We're on our show network down here, uh, which means that I can talk to it. So you notice my IP up here is the one that I entered down here, my fixed IP, which is in this case, 192, 168, 0, and 100. Again, uh, you may configure your network differently. And of course, you would have different IP addresses. Uh, so you just need to make sure that this matches with whatever your network is set up to use. So we've got that. Also over here, we are uh, our official name for this device is FPP Master, which is great. I've got that uh, useless DNS uh, entry down there. Uh, and so actually we're basically configured on the master. And the reason why is if we come down here to uh, status control and then FPP settings, uh, and I come over here to system, we are already in the player mode. And if you drop that down, you notice there's a different mode down here. It's called remote. But again, this is our master, so we want to stay in the player mode. And we want to turn on just one option here, and that is the send multi-sync packets. And now we've got that. Now, of course, there's some other optional things you might set, like uh, the blank, the screen on startup. Uh, you might adjust your, your HDMI settings over here. Right now, our audio is, is coming out of the, uh, the port on the uh, Pi, the little uh, headphone jack port. And you might want to adjust that. But those are up to your uh, particular situation. Uh, so we're not even going to change any of that stuff. Uh, all we're really going to do is set so it sends multi-sync packets, that little checkbox right there, and now we can just uh, restart the uh, interface here. All right, now it's updated. Uh, and we're basically good to go on the master, except we will need some files uh, to bring in uh, in order to uh, give it some content here. Uh, and so let's go over here to content setup. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a playlist because you put files under a playlist. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll just create a new playlist here. And I'm just gonna call this uh, sync test and just click add playlist and now we need to add some files uh, so we can actually play something to the playlist uh, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the file manager under content uh, setup and we're going to come over here to video uh, and we can either select or drag and drop these files in and here are the two files that I'm going to bring in. Now, uh, there's a couple of them, and they're both special in a way because I have added a counter on each one of them, which shows the actual frame that it's displaying when that counter is shown. So every single frame, there is a number in these videos. Uh, and uh, this first one here is kind of the real content, if you will. If you will, this would be the, well, we're going to actually project on our house or, or whatever. Um, and uh, But it's not enough, and we'll uh, talk about that why later on. Uh, but let me go ahead, and I'm going to drag this guy here in and uh, let him upload. All right, he's all done uploading. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, bring in this special little buffer video that I have created. So we'll drop him in here too, because uh, we're going to need that in a minute. Because what we're going to find out is, is that the very first video that it plays, it oftentimes is a little bit out of sync. However, by the second video that it plays, it's totally in sync. 
So basically what I created is just a blank, a blank buffer file. I did make it gray so it looks a little different uh, just for testing purposes. But obviously you'd normally make it black. Maybe uh, it's only 60 frames long, uh, which is uh, on a 30 frame video is two seconds worth. But that's enough to allow the Falcon Pie players to get totally in sync. So when it actually plays our real video down here, our test video in this case, uh, it will be totally in sync between the two different players. So we have basically prepped uh, our uh, master Falcon Pie player, this guy right up here. Uh, and now it's time to prep our remote. And uh, by the way, if you want to have more than one remote, basically all we would do is give them different names and different IP numbers on our network. Uh, and that's really the only difference. You can have as many as you like. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get those configured. Okay, now we're on our second Raspberry Pi. And if you notice, I've connected to the uh, that FPP network that it creates. I'm back on 192.168.8.1, and we're basically going to do the exact same thing we did with the other one, uh, with just a couple of minor tweaks here. Uh, so we're going to come over here to this, and we're going to call this FPP dot uh, remote. Again, if this would have multiple ones, you can name them different things, you know, maybe left side of house, front of house, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a, uh, that uh, uh, address down here for the DNS server so it won't be crabbing at me. Uh, base configuration has changed. A reboot is required. Yeah, let's just go ahead and reboot. Okay, it's rebooted, and just like before, uh, this was a very generic uh, Falcon Pi player setup. I just expanded the file system, clicked OK on the initial setup, uh, and so we're just making changes from there. Uh, so again, come down to network, and uh, this time we're going to set our interface settings, and again, I'm going to go to WLAN. I'm going to set a static IP. In this case, I'm going to make it 101. Uh, my gateway is a 10, by the way, in my network. Uh, and then I'm going to enter in the show network information down here. And yeah, go ahead and enter in the password. There we go. And once again, I'm going to click Update Interface. Now again, just note that I have a different IP address here. Uh, for this Pi because uh, remember this guy is FPP remote. So let's go ahead and update that interface. Oh, it's crabbing at me about the DNS. I thought I'd set a DNS. I guess I had not set a DNS. Let me update the DNS here. All right, so my remote Falcon Pi player has rebooted. And by the way, I figured out if you change the network settings, like I did when I set the wireless network, it resets that DNS setting. So it's going to make you set it every time. So there's no point in setting it ahead of time. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, this is our master. It says FPP master right up there. Again, that has to be configured to whatever's going to work on your local network. Uh, and I also have FPP remote over here. Now, right now, both of them are set uh, the same as far as being a player. Again, that's under status and control, uh, FPP settings and system here. Uh, but I want to make this guy a remote. Now, uh, notice all of a sudden the screen has changed here. Remember we used to have a little checkbox down there for the multicast or whatever, right? Oh, it, that's gone, okay? Uh, and so now we just have like this uh, location over here, uh, but that's really not necessary to set, I find. Uh, and again, we can configure things like blank the screen on startup, you know, change the, you know, the HDMI settings like we did before. But again, we're not really interested in that today. So uh, that's uh, check out that in the other video, see what those settings are about. Uh, but let's go back over here and I'm going to go over here to status and control to the status page. And let's take a look. Well, gee, that suddenly looks a lot different, doesn't it? Let's come over here. See, this guy is ready to play my playlist. Uh, and this guy basically just has a screen that's going to show me what it's going to play when it's told to. Uh, and by the way, it is prompting me to restart the uh, interface here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to restart the interface. All right, now our interface is rebooted, but we need to do one more really important thing on our Falcon Pi Player remote in order to get it set up to play. And that is we need to add the exact same files, at least in name and length, as our master. So uh, let's come over here again to our master. 
and I'm going to come over here to content setup and going to go to file manager and to videos and we've got two videos in here one says 60 uh, space frame space buffer uh, and the other one says test space video and they're both .mp4s uh, and we need to have files exactly with this name over on our remote now they don't actually have to contain the same video content they need to be the same length and have the same name but they can be totally different uh, and that's actually exactly what you do let's say you have two projectors and you're actually you need to uh, use both of them because your house is so wide uh, that you need two projectors what, what you want to do is you want to have a video that plays on the right side of the house let's say a video player that plays on the left side of the house uh, and, but they need to be totally in sync so what you're going to do is you're going to create your holiday projection map. Uh, it's going to contain a, a left side, maybe it's a 1080p video, and it goes to the 1080p projector on the uh, left side of the house. And then you're going to create a, a video that does the exact the right side of the house that you want to project at the exact same time. Uh, but it's absolutely critical that they be the same length and that you name them the same thing. Uh, so as long as you do that, you are great. Now in this test example, I didn't do that. I wanted to compare frame by frame what was playing. And so I actually, I'm gonna leave the videos the same, okay? But normally, of course, you would be playing something else. All right, so let's come over here to our FPP remote. And I'm gonna come over to content setup and to the file manager. Uh, we are going to uh, bring back up my uh, sample files here. Uh, I'm going to select both of them and just drag and drop them in because that's the quickest way. And now that everything's uploaded, so if I come over here to videos, there they are. Uh, now you might be thinking, well, gee, let's uh, create a playlist next, right? Or maybe we should create a playlist before. No, it's not necessary. In fact, you do not create a playlist on the remote. Uh, that is only for the master. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what happens if we come over here to the FPP master and uh, let's go into status and control here and uh, go down to multi-sync and just double check that we see both of our pies here sure enough there's the master at 100 there's the remote at 101 by the way there is a unicast feature they do not recommend you turn on the unicast with the multicast and remember i've already selected multicast uh, on the master so we're not going to set that or turn anything on in fact we're not going to do anything on this page we just want to make sure it can see both pies so now that we're sure that the uh, master can see the remote we are good to go so let's make sure that that uh, remote has something to play so uh, let's come over here to content uh, setup we're going to go into the uh, playlist i'm going to select our uh, sync test here and i'm going to add both of our videos now i'm going to add the 60 frame buffer first okay and then i'm going to add the test video and that's really important because again we want to use this uh, 60 frame buffer it literally is just 60 frames of video that's two seconds if you're at 30 frames a second, which this one is, uh, in order to kind of be the sacrificial lamb. It's gonna be well out of sync, okay? Uh, but we don't really care because by the time it finishes playing that one and starts the next one, everything's gonna be in perfect sync. Uh, so we've got our two videos in there in the order which they need to be in. So I'm gonna hit save playlist. And now if I come back over here to the status page and I click play, it starts playing. Now, what's happening on the remote? Well, if we come over here uh, and I come over to status control and the uh, status page, notice it says, hey, the uh, master has me playing this file right now. Well, isn't that kind of cool? Uh, yeah, so it's basically being controlled. And believe it or not, they are perfectly in sync. Now, I did this uh, kind of an experiment without that first little 60 frame buffer file, and sure enough, they were not in sync. It was about five or six frames off. Uh, and so I just created a little short uh, buffer file basically and stuck it at the beginning uh, and that fixed the problem. So basically don't put a production video as your first video. Just create some little scratch thing again. It can be two seconds long. Uh, that seems to be plenty of time for the Falcon Pie players to get in sync. And that's it. So we've set up our 
master and remote to play projections for the holidays. Uh, so I certainly hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, and until next time, I'll uh, talk to you later.